Yeah, that's it. Go down. Brilliant. Well done. Okay, test one first. That's excellent. Okay, everyone smiling. Brilliant. Last one there. Uh, you know, right. if you remember it, <laughs> a little bit, so I just, well, I love the guy, I was just clapping him at home, I was just saying, this guy is phenomenal. He came with his beach shorts on, didn't he? He had his short vest tucked out, and he was just like, yeah, whatever, I'm going to the beach, yeah, I'm just going to the beach. And can you imagine if you're competing against this guy, and you're looking at, you're looking at him, thinking, this guy looks like he's going to the beach. And you know he's fast, that's just going to so intimidate the other athletes, and this is why, you know, when he does all that stuff, He's relaxed so much because he's so confident. He's just showing confidence. It's not about, I'm going to be different to the rest of the world and do all this. He's actually just got being, um, we were talking about arrogance last night. It's not so much arrogance, it's just sheer confidence. And if you can show that, people can feel it. Linford Christie used to do the opposite um, when he competed. He'd do that stare, you know, he'd be massive, ripped up muscles. I remember one competition, <laughs> I'll never forget it. He's in the running blocks and he was so <laughs> like this all mad. He went down in the blocks which are made of metal, you've obviously most probably all seen him. And he pushed so hard, he snapped them, he broke the running blocks, you know, it broke them in half and you know, all the other friends are like, ooh, I can't believe he's just broke this metal equipment, which is you don't break, you can't break running blocks. But that's how strong was, and he was just like, you know, picked up the you know, the next set and he used to he used to just do things to intimidate the other athletes and that's what it's all about is it's all about getting into your zone all about getting yourself confident all about beating them psychologically before the race is even started i believe and i think if you chat to most athletes of my level they will tell you it's about 80 percent mental 20 percent talent because when you're on that line I'm just as good as everyone else and they're just as good as me. I'm not going to be big-headed enough to say, no, I was the best, I'm the fastest, I'm the most talented. No. In fact, I'd actually say I was most probably one of the least talented, um, natural talent. But where I excelled over some of the others is that. Because, you know, people used to go, hey, who's this little short Welsh guy? What's he going to do? But as soon as I started doing those intimidation games playing chicken and stuff, they would all, oh, hang on, he's going to hurt me here. So, so that's what it was all about. So, um, you know, I just want to share with you those insights. I think we're going to watch the relay. You can see that in just a second. Just so second. Let's explore this idea about psychology sport because these people, kids and talented, are, are well aware of this and they're going to use this when they compete. Now, I go and watch rugby quite a lot and I, I always go and watch the warm ups. And the greatest team were, no doubt, the New Zealand All Blacks. And I always watch the two greatest players, Richie McCall and Dan Carter. And I always warm up together. And they spend half an hour and they lie on the floor, get up and sprint 50 metres. And they keep doing that. And as they go past each other, McCall says to Carter, I'm the greatest player in the world. And Carter says, no, you're not. I'm the greatest player in the world. But by the time they go to the match, they believe they are the best. Their attitude is complete. And they're ready. And they invariably win. And the weekend, I watched the uh, Junior World Cup. And Wales, under 20, played the All Blacks. Physically, they were very, very similar. Yet the All Blacks won quite easily because as Jamie says, all about this attitude. The thing I'm interested in as well with, with attitude is, do you have any sledging going on during the course of race? You find it's hard to believe that people are sprinting eyeballs out, yet they've got time to actually talk to each other and intimidate each other during the race. Yeah, well, I, I remember a certain race, um, only over 60 metres, it was uh, Lympha Christie versus um, Leroy Burrell, who was the fastest um, athlete in the world at the time, over 100 metres, he broke the world record. I remember the actual time we ran. And over 60 metres, I can't, I, I've never seen it before and I'll never see it again, I doubt. After 30 metres, Linford and Leroy were neck to neck. Leroy pulled ahead of him by about a metre, turned back round and was just running like that, looking back <laughs> and crossing the line. I thought, oh no, you know, you can't do that over 60 metres by looking back like that. <laughs> and uh, it was quite funny because they actually showed you behind the scenes when they go off the track and they go around the corner into the, into the warm-up area, you could just see <laughs> that they had to take it off air because you saw Linford pick up one of those blocks, you know, the running blocks, the, the actual bits. And all you could see is him going towards Leroy right, like this and had to cut off the camera. So I don't know what happened after that. But that's, you know, it's, it, it is all about the, the, the psychology. I, I mean, you know, in, in 1992, a long time ago, when we won, broke the, we actually broke the world record in the World Juniors. 
um, over uh, in the 4 by one it was myself, Darren Campbell, um, Alan Condon, and Jason Fergus, who lives not far away, Jason, actually. And, um, you know, even before that race, it was all about intimidation with the other athletes. So even as a junior, when I was 18, 17, 18, you know, you'd be playing these psychological tricks in your warm-up against the others. You always make, want to make it seem like you're composed. You always want to make it seem like you're cool. I always tell the footballers who I look after, don't, you know, when, you know, when halfway through the game, don't see me go like this, you know, have a little breather. Because when you're down like that, your opponent's going to see that, see you down like this, going, oh, he's a bit tired. So, you know, even if you're tired and you're dying, don't let anyone else see it. You know, behind the scenes, even though you're blowing inside, just make it seem like you're cool. That's why when you see um, some of the world's greatest athletes, and I used to do it all the time, I'd cross the line, um, you know, in the heats or whatever, even though it was very difficult, you'd cross the line, you'd usually see them unravel their vest and they'd be like this to the crowd, they'd be like that. As soon as they went around the corner, you'd be like, and puking up or whatever. But you don't show the other athletes that part. You just show them that it looks like nothing was a problem. So it's very important that psychology in this in this game is paramount. So in the 4 by 4 and the Americans in the relay, and they're sledging you, what was, what was your response? <coughs> um, well, it, it, was always, it, was, it was always that intimidation factor. You know, the Americans are quite thick-skinned. They're quite, you know, they're very arrogant in, in relative terms to the other nations. But um, I know they used to always fear us, um, especially in, back on my own trouble. in our day, back then, you know, we had a, a great team. You know, with uh, Roger, Ewan and Mark, you know, we you know, we had a really fast team and you know, we'd play those psychological games, come off the track, you know, and they would be in heat one, we'd be in heat two, you'd come off the track and you'd just give them a little look as if to say, Yeah, I'll see you tomorrow like and that's it. You know, it's always this little bit of rivalry going on. It's very important, you know, that sport isn't just playing the game, it's being bigger than that. It's it's it's, it's a lot bigger than that. But Equally at the same time, it's, you know, I always used to do it with a smile on my face. Um, and the more you enjoy it, the more you love it. The more you love it, the more you enjoy. And the rest follows suit. And what athletes hate, other athletes hate, is to see somebody enjoying themselves. What an athlete will love to see is you under pressure. So if you can make it seem like, you're, you know, you're playing football, netball, whatever, and it looks like you're happy and cool, Everyone else will hate it because they're like, "Hang on, he's only, is he? He's enjoying this, and he's making me look a fool, you know." And that's when you put the other people under more pressure. They, you put them under more pressure; they get tight. The more tight they get, the slower they get. The rest is history. Alvin Harrison. Alvin Harrison, yeah. Um, I don't know if I said this story to you before. No, no. Okay. Um, I'll say a couple of the stories, and if you haven't heard them, I thought you might hear them when I've said it before, but. Um, Olympic final, um, 1996, you can imagine a lot of pressure um, on us. We were the second fastest team in the world that, that day. America were number one, they were just, you know, just you know, 100,000 spectators. Yeah, 100,000 spectators watching it. 100,000 Americans. Yeah, 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 it was. Um, incredible day. Um, anyway, the race goes, you and Thomas on first leg, me on second leg, Mark. Richard on to leg one to bottom four. The race goes, you and Thomas going round in lane in lane five, America in lane four. So you and running around the track for quick bit, really cool, going through it now, going down the back straight. I'm coming up, he's coming up the home street, he's coming up the home street, and I take the baton off him, I just don't drop the baton, don't drop him, take off the baton. And as I'm running around the tr track, and I say, I will say this story, it's very true, and I'm running around the bend like this, going for it. And the American Alvin Harrison runs inside me. As he runs inside me, he goes, Ah, oh, yeah, baby. Ah, oh, yeah, baby. He's talking as he's running. I'm thinking, well, How are you doing, mate? Like, you know, watching. And he goes, Ah, oh, yeah, baby. So he's playing these psychological tricks on me. He's like trying to make it seem like he's really cool. It's American. I thought, That's it. I'm not happy about that. I'm going to have him there, right? 100,000 people, 99,000 from being Americans. He's about that yeah, far That's ahead. a good answer. Brilliant. Well done. Okay, test one first. That's excellent. Okay, everyone smiling. Brilliant. Last one there. That's great. Thank you.